Well, hi everyone, Corey Barker here, and welcome back to the Photoshop Master FX official YouTube page. Now, in this little video, I want to show you a quick little design trick using blur effects inside of Photoshop. Really fun trick, and you only really need one photo to do this. And then what we're going to use here is this um, cool skyline image, uh, nighttime skyline of New York City. Now, in order to begin, we need to first define this image as a pattern. Now, you probably think patterns you define um, in a variety of different ways. You want to define a repeating pattern or a texture or something like that. It probably never occurs to you, perhaps, to define an entire image as a pattern. But that's what we're going to do here. So just simply go to the Edit menu. You're not going to make a selection or anything like that. You just simply go to the Edit menu, go to Define Pattern, and then once you're queued, go ahead and give it a name. We'll just call it New York 1. And now it's defined as a pattern inside Photoshop. Now, we're going to go ahead and put a blur on this background layer here. So I'm going to go to the uh, filter menu, and we're not going to do a traditional blur like we normally would. Someday, you know, back in the past, I would normally go right to Gaussian blur and then blur it that way. In this case, however, we're going to go to the blur gallery and choose field blur. Now, this allows you to apply a good amount of blur, but it also amount allows you to apply a bokeh effect, as you can see over here in the effects panel when you're in the blur setting. So I'm actually going to increase the amount of blur here just a little bit, and let's go ahead and uh, add some light bokeh, and let's dim it down a little bit. You can add a lot more of the bokeh color if you want. It really depends on the intensity you want it to be. I want it to be semi-realistic, so I am just going to give it a good amount of bokeh, but not too much... Um, detail blown out or anything like that. And by detail, I mean, I don't want a lot of the bright lights blowing out or anything like that. So, okay. So as you're tweaking the settings here, just make sure that you're um, adjusting the, the overall blur as well as the, um, the bokeh effects here in the effects panel as well. And I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And now we've got that blur effect applied. Now I'm gonna apply a uh, a color effect over this background. I, don't, I want it to be kind of a monochromatic background with just the um, for just the blur element. So I'm going to go ahead and add the, a new solid color shape. Now you can do this a couple of different ways. You can do a solid color or even do a hue saturation adjustment layer, depending on how you want to colorize the layer. Ordinarily, I would use hue saturation, but in this case, I'm actually going to use solid color, just so you can see a little bit of a difference here. And I'm going to set the color to a kind of dark red, deep red color there. And the beauty of it, of course, being a shape layer like this is that you can just double click on the icon and just uh, choose a different color anytime you want. But I'm gonna blend this with that background layer by changing the blend mode to overlay. Now you can see it gives me a rather interesting color effect on that blurred background, but it also is rather dark. Now I could drop down the opacity of the colored layer, but I'll lose some of that color intensity and I don't wanna do that. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna add a levels adjustment layer between that color layer and the background layer. Now in the properties panel here, we're gonna go into the output levels right down here at the bottom and you're just gonna drag the dark slider in a little bit and you'll see the, back, the overall image <clears throat> tends to get a little bit lighter. I don't want to get too light. Let's go something right about there. And that looks pretty good. So you can see the difference there. It's really bringing it out more. And again, it's an adjustment layer. We can adjust it uh, anytime we want. So now I'm going to go back to the very top of the layer stack here and add a new, or actually, no, we're not going to add a new layer, but we're actually going to go ahead and create a shape layer. I'm going to go into the toolbar and grab a the rectangular shape tool here. Now make sure in the options bar that the tool mode is set to shape. And it really doesn't matter what color it is, but for the sake of visibility, I'm just gonna make it a, a kind of a dark gray. And then I'm just gonna draw a box right here in the image. And you'll see it goes ahead and creates the new layer uh, and applies it as a shape right there and everything. So that looks really good. Now we're gonna go into that shape layer and apply a layer style. I'm just gonna double click on the layer itself and we're gonna check on pattern overlay here. And then you're gonna go, go up to the um, pattern menu here, just click on this little icon and you should see the pattern. It's the very last thing to find here, which is that city image. And there we go. Now if I move my image out of the way, you can see it kind of lines up. You can see the tiling is a little off here. And I can click and move it around the image manually and you'll see it automatically tiles the image. But what you wanna do is actually click to snap to origin and that will bring it back to its original position there. And that looks good. Now actually what I'm gonna do here is 
um, leave out, leave the blend mode and the opacity at normal and everything. But I'm going to go to scale setting here, and let's just bump this up to about 103. Just gives it a little bit of a a shift, and you'll see why we're doing it in a moment. It's not necessary, um, but it does kind of have a, an interesting effect here. Now, before we click out of here, I'm actually going to add one more style to this, and that is an inner shadow. And that just kind of gives it some depth on those edges there. Actually, I want to do it all around the edges, so let's do an inner glow, perhaps. And... Let's make it a dark color, and we'll set this to multiply. Increase the size a little bit. There we go. <clears throat> so now we're seeing a little bit of depth there. So that's all we did. We added the pattern overlay, which is the city image, the non-blurred uh, city image, and then the inner glow to help give it a little bit of depth and everything. And that's the only two styles we have here, and I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So now if I were to go over here and grab my Move tool and just move the image back and forth, you can see... It's kind of like a, a focus window around the blurred area. So you can see as I pass it over, now notice it tends to shift its position. And that's because of the slight amount of scaling we added to this layer here. So we're moving that image all the way around. Now, notice how the image is staying in place. If yours isn't doing that, and it's probably because I forgot to show you one last thing here. See this little item here where it says link with layer? You want to make sure that is unchecked inside your layer style here, because if it is, I'll just show you what happens. If it's on and I move that layer around, you'll see that the image moves with it, and you don't want it to do that. So I'm going to undo that, go back into that style, and once again, make sure that pattern overlay is not linked with the layer. And that way it stays put, and you can move the image back and forth and do whatever you want with it. So I'm actually going to take that shape and skew the angle a little bit. And and then because it's a shape layer, I can move it with the move tool or grab the pet or the path selection tool and move it around as well. And I can also take that path selection tool and modify the shape if I wanted to. If I wanted to make this a little bit uh, more narrow or even wider, and I can certainly do that just by moving that image around there. And then finally, it's just a matter of adding some text or doing whatever. So and let's call this what it is. Nope. Because it's New York. So I'm just using a simple impact font here. Let's just assume this is going to be the background for a design that we're working on. I may even just give this a little bit of a skew to match the angle of my little box there. Let's make that a little bit. But you can do whatever you want. But you can see now with that one photo we were able to take that and apply some uh, various layer effects to achieve a rather interesting look on this. And again, remember, you can grab that box and just move it around, and wherever you want to see the city in your image, just position that box in there, and that is how you can get a rather interesting blur effect in your designs. So be sure to check out more here on the official Master Effects Training YouTube page, and also check out the training I offer over at Master Effects Training. Dot com. We'll see you guys next time.